All right. I hope your day's treating you well so far. And thanks for your time. Welcome to the world of what was at radio.com. It is a place to discover true modern rock. And I'm talking over 5,000 bands that have released songs no older than five years back. And Nipe sent the playlist to release 2020 onwards. One of my favorite records of 2021 was this time next year by Kikapichi. These lads out of Hastings are exceptionally talented, redonkulously driven, and also utter sweethearts. The conversation I had with George and Ben just fills me with flipping joy. Now, a conversation with, because the podcast of what was at radio.com is split in two. Some of those can go two, three, four hours. What was short is where one of my best friends and podcast editor, Mike Battle, picks his favorite nugget in and around 10 minutes that maybe galvanizes you to dive into those that galvanize me that led to us having a conversation that maybe was a galvanizing triangle. Uh, it, tri- it, um, I'm not in the Illuminati, so I don't know what, where I'm going with this point, right? Connect the dots and then boom, you dive into discovering more about them. That, that in a nutshell all right so let's talk about the creation of this time next year maybe let's work out at the same time on the exercise bike behind me thanks for being here yeah and by the way if you're right-handed get the mustache on the left hand you look like an idiot when you're trying to make a good point in a meeting here's the thing though (laughs) is that while i go and lie on the couch uh so that so that george can get whatever lustful wish and request he wants in uh, i'm going to quote upsetmagazine.com where jack who's resting his precious vocals, his mighty vocals right now. Jack uh, said, quote, you hear that phrase a lot. This time next year, you'll be doing things and playing here. Sometimes you find it hard to see what you've achieved and how far you've come because you've always got to look ahead to what the next thing is. It could be a really toxic way to live life and one that is quite often the norm. On the other hand, it's also relevant to what's going on right now. Everyone's lives are on pause. We're all waiting and hoping for this time next year. So I'm going to go and sit down for a few minutes and listen to, oh no, my headphones won't reach. I'll turn my headphones up really loud and mute the microphone whilst you dive into the process of this record. I mean, you were mentioning 50 minutes ago, Ben, how, okay, half produced and then half you're jumping on YouTube and learning yourself and equipping yourself those tools to do so. Tell me about that journey. And I've all, I don't really prepare any interviews. Uh, I like to just converse and just stumble into discovery and and making friendships and connections. But the four things I wrote down on my pad were uh, sardines, thugs, working man's town and self-saboteur because those are the four that really scream to me on what is an incredible debut album. And so to Ben and to George, please don't get distracted by the fact I'm wearing some shitty Tesco trousers that my brother sent me that keep me nice and warm. I didn't think my bottom half would be on screen. And so... uh, Not not often that it is in this format. So I'm glad to have... You know I mean? Over to you. I'm going to turn my headphones up real loud and listen, but I'll come back if I can't hear. So it's, it's, uh, it's interesting that... uh, you would take these four tracks because like two of them were done by us and two of them we did with other people, which is, yeah. I guess when you're making shit, you're always worried, like, is it going to all gel together? Loving the trousers, oh, my look. brother. Oh, oh is it? Mate. I can see the scale of the sofa now. Yo, wow. Mate, exquisite. That is some perspective, man. That's a big one, man. Right. Anyway, but yeah, so what, what was interesting is like, so we did Sardines and we did Thugs with this guy, Gavin Monaghan. He's like amazing guy. Legend, got a, got yeah. a studio in Wolverhampton. Like he's done loads of wicked bands. Like it was a real pleasure to work it with was, him. It was, it was. Learned a lot about how to make decisions quickly and mm. say, this is the sound we're using and working with stuff. And, you know, it was, it was a real every, good Every, every process that you go on uh, yeah, in terms of like recording and working with people is, is just another like step in that journey of like, as long as you make yourself a sponge, man, in it. Like, yes. and we always do. Me and G Mac always watching. Everyone's always watching. We both produce like yeah other bits as well. Yeah, so that's it, man. But but with these tracks, but with Working Man's Town and Self Sab, Working Man's Town was actually the first thing we did because we um we went and recorded the drums up in in uh, Saffron Walden in Cambridge, and then we came back, recorded all the gits in a, in a, in a in a house was um, in Town one of our house. Room? Yeah, I think it was. I think it was. And then we did all the rest of the stuff and then mixed it. And it was kind of like the first, uh, in my opinion, that's my personally yeah. my favorite mix, my favorite production, because yeah. there wasn't any overthinking about it. It was just going, cool, let's give this a go. And it was very pure, you know. Mm. Um, and with Self Sab, similar thing. That We did basically everything else. Self, like Self Sab was a, we, we replicated how we did Working Man's Town. Yeah. But like, like, like you said, like, that was the first one where we'd we'd done it ourselves. Like Ben Ben was on the the engineering on on the knobs, man. Like, and we we set all the mics up ourselves, did all that. It was um once once you'd learned that process and how to like do that, 
all the other tracks we kind of did in a similar makes a lot of sense man i mean like again like we said earlier like there's this whole thing that people i think you see a lot of producers especially when you're watching youtube videos like to act like they're sort of like oh i know how to do this thing that no one else could ever do because i'm a genius and it's like nah man Mm. once you get once the penny drops you're like mate this is not this is quite fun because the actual making of it the technicalities you can get it's how long is a piece of string. It, it it also turns the 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 best bit I, I find with us as as a, a group of like musicians and friends is like that studio time when we're all in there. Like you know the songs may have been written and we've like recorded these bits and whatever. But like once you understand and you're comfortable enough with the process, you can have fun and you can be more creative. Twice. Suddenly you're you're not. You're not listening to stuff. Well, not that it's bad, but you're you're not. There's not someone else. You're just like making all these decisions, yeah, going like, and, and you know how to execute them. So you're just suddenly in this creative realm of just like it's super it's been fun. fun. Like we a, a lot of the the writing process that we cultivated through the process of album one was quite interesting because before it kind of be like you know the eyed guitars and blah 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 and whatever else, and, and that still happens sometimes. But we started doing this thing now where three or four of us or two of us or however many will sit in a room together with a microphone in the middle in G-Max basement. I, I basically, so I have my <laughs> drum kit set up in my basement toilet at my dad's house, right? So I can just go downstairs, have a wee if I want, or play drums. How it's big's the fucking toilet, dude? What, Mate, what do you mean? it's not big. It's not, not that big. But <laughs> it is long, right? It's, it's long. It's long. There's a toilet at one end. Anyway, so Well, so you just set it up like Blue Man Group. Tom's on the ceiling and a kick drum. Yeah, that's in right. The like, it's it's sink. I'm lucky to be able to make that much noise where I live, like, you know. And thank you for that putting up with that a few hours. And then we uh, we set up a mic in the room and we'll, we'll just record for like two hours straight, find the right beats, find it. Anyway, to cut a long story short, that process was really, really good because it gave us the confidence that when we made songs like that, we knew they would translate to the studio. We knew they would translate they feel to good live. To play, yeah. They felt good at that moment. And Self Sab was an example of that. Working Man's Town was an example of that. Thugs, Thugs was an Thugs. example of that. Thugs was like literally done in, in the toilet. Right? Yeah. Like that was literally no. like a like a sunny day and it just like came out. That was a very quick tune that just was like, you know, we'd like jammed out this stuff, like this music, put it on the computer. Kind of made a demo. Of made it. a little bit fatter. Jack come over, bang. It and was, it's, it was sometimes those ones that are a gift are so nice because sometimes songs take you fucking five, six weeks. Yeah. Sometimes they take you one day, sometimes they take you one hour, you know. But when, well, those ones that you really love and that come easily are, you feel like they're a gift, you know? They are a gift. 100%, man. I, uh, I've got a friend called Steve Bays, who's a producer over in Vancouver, who has been in many bands over the years. I don't know if you know Hot Hot Heat from, from the early 2000s. Yeah. Yeah, um, he's a producer more so these days. But he, is, when I spoke to him several years back, the first time I met him, he said, I record every single second of every single jam. And this is when I had started um, a band many years back that is no more as of, as of just before the pandemic. But that's why we would record every single jam on Zoom every show on GoPro, every single second, because you, you never know when that one, two second riff's going to appear that turns into a dynamite and, song. And, sorry, sorry. The second thing, no, don't be sorry, George, but I, I do want to get to this question that, 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 that was sparked when Ben was talking then about thugs. Um, the juxtaposition between the lyrical content and the video of thugs, you know, the song starts and saying the computer and your phones are all bugged, right? Every time we kick up dust, every time we cause a fuss, they call us thugs. So what was the idea behind the video that really looks into fox hunting and, and lyrically, where you don't seem to get a sense of that story, why was that a point uh, that you wanted to make? Where did that come it was, from? It was interesting because that video idea had been one that was conjured up around 2019. And like it was when we were talking about that all that time before, that idea was one that got kind of thrown around about it. And then it, we ended up making a video made for 2019, which we really liked. But then when we'd written Thugs, even before we weren't even planning the video, it was like when we were writing the song, it was like, oh, I really think that that video would work as a metaphor for the, for the stuff, you know? Like, I think it, it kind of, you know, it it describes sort of the sort of David and Goliath story of, of, of fox hunting, which is kind of also the sort of uh, relationship between 
people in a social stratification mm. sense in, 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 in not just the UK, everywhere, you know? And I think that that was the sort of metaphor around why it matched with the lyrics, you know, you want a war, we'll give you war. What if the foxes fought back? What if suddenly, you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the guy gets caught by the foxes, you know, to simplify it. But I think that's kind of how it, it went through. And it was, it was one of the things we love about making videos, and this is true to now, is that all the ones, non-performance of course, that have extras, everything like that, they're all done in Hastings. They're all done with people that we know. They're all made by people in Hastings. And it's like, it's so nice to feel like you get to participate in creativity within your town. And that's not something you're doing and sacrificing. That's something you're doing and getting more. Yeah. You know what I mean, you're getting really, better really. By, by interacting with your community. And it's like, it's, it's good. And we've got the same thing. We've just want to give one shout out to Savage Sound, mm. which is Dr. Savage's studio. He's an amazing blues man performer, but Total that's legend, the studio man. we work out of now. We've, and this, we're making the next album in there as well at the moment. And, you know, there's, yeah, we, we are very, 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 very lucky to come from where we come from in terms of all the creativity we have access to. Yeah, like you said, like, I just can't, I just, yeah. I've got a lot of love for all those people who have helped us out because there is so many, like I said, yeah. they're all super talented. And just yeah, you, just you, we couldn't have done it without any of those people. Like everyone who's helped us on our journey has been Couldn't crucial. have done it without our town. Yeah, big time. And that's what you talk about in Working Man's Town. Well, that's it, man. I think a lot of, a lot of the music that we write and like, you know, Jack, who I'm sure you would like next time we do this and there definitely will be next time if you have us like we can talk oh damn right lyrics. we can talk about lyrical stuff more you know but a lot of those lyrics are you know they're about the, the us observational about where we're from some stuff personal some stuff everything but it's just talking about a town you love so much and people that you love so much mm. and the anger in music can come it often you get more angry about things that happen to the people you love that's even it. more than things that happen to you and the, if things that happen to a place you love you know that's why you a see lot it. of our you music is angry because often it's whatever it's about it's coming it's coming from that place yeah. and from a know. place of like being surrounded by it you know like and like witnessing things knowing the stuff you know what i mean it's like 100 man 100 mm. percent all right, that was What Was Short with Kid Capici. If you want to check out the entire conversation, go to whatwasatradio.com slash podcast. It's a place to discover true modern rock. It's an arts academy for people over five to apply for music lessons here in Canada. Yes, I'm from England, but I'm based on Vancouver Island. Have been in Victoria for over 12 years now. What else am I missing? 24-hour radio station. I'm live weekdays between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. Pacific. Let's just leave it at that. Whatever you're doing the rest of your day, and as always, please look after yourself. And I hope there's some fun and smiles involved in the rest of it too because we've got to cherish that positive. I really appreciate your time. Cheerio. It was a big nod, wasn't it?